Hey everybody, it's Fahim from Subscriber, Contractor, Founder of MedLearn. It's amazing for you to be here today and I hope you are all in good health because we have an absolutely special video today. We are going to be focusing on making sure that you thoroughly understand everything you need to know about your scope of practice. So before we go any further, as you know, subscribe, like, share and click on the bell icon because we need you to be part of the family so together we can A, build a better world, make a difference and let's make sure we are absolutely enjoying our lives. Come and follow me. What I'd like you to do is I want you to understand what we're going to be talking about today because whether you're a nurse, whether you're a pharmacist, or if you're a healthcare professional that can legally get onto a prescribing course, then you are going to be at some point coming across the scope of practice. And these are the questions that we get asked all the time. Whether it's Farooq dealing with our students, whether it's myself or my colleagues, we get asked, what is the scope of practice? How do I choose a scope of practice? Can you provide us with examples? How do we write a scope of practice? We get asked these questions all the time, so I'm about to answer them all today for you. Do visit our website, www.medlearn.com, because there is so much information there that can assist with answering your questions about how do you get onto a prescribing course, how to find a DMP or a DPP. We got it all covered for you folks, but let's get back to the video. First of all, what is the scope of practice? And I'm going to use this term SOP. You can think of a scope of practice as an area in which you are competent to advise, manage and treat. So let's break it down. This is an area, so this is a disease state, it could be a disease state, and we're going to write some bits on here. So we have this disease state, I will put DS for disease state. This is a disease state that you can safely manage, so you can manage, you can diagnose, and you can treat. That's important to remember. So it can be any area. It could be, for example, it could be if you're a community pharmacist, it could be acute conditions or minor illnesses. And we're going to get into this in a bit more depth in a moment. But just think about an area which you can honestly manage, diagnose and treat. And remember, I've spoken many times about this. If you are looking to find out if you're competent in an area, what you need to do is just visit the RPS, RPS framework for prescribers. Go on the website, you can go on to Medlin, type in RPS framework for prescribers or visit the Royal Pharmaceutical Society and have a read of the RPS framework. What this is, is a set of statements that you will read and then you will have to justify that you can do it. For example, one of the statements might read, I thoroughly take a history. You've got to ask yourself in this disease state, can I take a thorough history? Do I know all the differential diagnosis? Can I safely say that I know, I want you to jot this down, I'm writing down, incidence, age, I'm going to in a second explain what this is, sex, geography, etiology, pathology, microscopic, macroscopic, signs, symptoms and treatment. So the disease that you want to or you feel you're competent in, do you know its incidence? Do you know it's how the age affects the condition? How does sex affect the condition? What about geography? What about etiology? What's the cause? What about pathology? Microscopic, macroscopic? What about signs and symptoms, diagnosis and treatment? Do you know that condition absolutely inside out that you can now Think of that as your scope of practice. That is the question you will ask yourself. When you're thinking about a scope of practice, what you're thinking is that can I safely manage, diagnose and treat that disease? How do I know if I can? Number one, let me have a look at the RPS framework for prescribers because that is something that I need to make sure that I can demonstrate that I can do for my portfolio when I'm on the course. And we're going to discuss the course for prescribing in a lot of depth, but just keep this in mind. Also ask yourself, do I know how common that condition is? Do I know how age affects that condition? For example, otitis media is more common in children, not adults. Do I know this? Do I know how sex affects the condition? For example, a woman 
with pain in the lower abdomen area. You may be thinking of an ectopic pregnancy, but in a man, you might not be thinking that. So do I know about how sex can affect the condition? What about geography? Is this condition more common in certain areas than, for example, in an area that you live in now? For example, let's say you have a patient who has fever. The patient has muscle ache. You might think if that patient has come from a place, for example, like Africa, you might be thinking about malaria. But in the UK, you might not be thinking about malaria. So again, very important to remember. What about, what about etiology? What's the cause? Is it bacterial? Is it viral? Is it inflammation? What is the cause? What about pathology? Is it microscopic? Is it macroscopic? What about the pathology? Rather, do you understand what we see on a cellular level? Although that might not be too relevant, but what about on a physical level? Do you know the signs and symptoms? And then what about the treatment? So when you're thinking about your scope of practice, think of it as an area that you can safely manage, diagnose and treat, that's it. That's all it is. For a nurse, it's gonna be different. For a pharmacist, it's going to be different. For a physiotherapist, it's going to be different. For a paramedic, it's going to be different. But that's what you're thinking about. How do you choose your scope of practice? Now this nicely leads onto this. How you choose your scope of practice, think of your experience. If you're a community pharmacist, what do you see a lot of? You see acute conditions. So you see coughs, colds, ears, nose, throats, respiratory conditions, skin conditions. You see a lot of that. If you're a nurse or a pharmacist in general practice, then it might be chronic conditions. For example, asthma, diabetes, hypertension. As you can see, it's different. Paramedics deal with different areas. That's how you choose your scope. It's all individual to you, what you can safely manage, diagnose and treat. What about example areas? Let's think about this. So you can choose maybe ENT conditions and we're gonna write this down ENT. So you can choose maybe ENT related conditions. So that might be your otitis media, otitis externa, sinusitis and so on. What about respiratory? Maybe you might wanna focus on respiratory. And with the respiratory and in theory, in theory, the respiratory system includes ENT, but here you might think about, for example, asthma, COPD, infections of the lungs, bacterial infections like pneumonia, bronchitis, and so on. What about abdomen? So you might want to focus on abdomen. So we can focus on areas like abdomen. What about skin? What about muscular skeleton? So think of these are broad areas that you can focus on. But I know what you're interested in. What you want to know, Fahim, how do you write the scope of practice? This is what you want to know. You're thinking, forget the gobbledygook, forget all of that. This is great theory. Teach me this. How do I write my scope of practice? What I'd like you to do is remember, some universities will expect your scope of practice to be very narrow, and some universities will expect to be very broad. That's the key thing for you to understand. Narrow or broad. So let's think of a broad scope of practice. I may write down on my statement that I will diagnose, manage and treat ENT related conditions, their differentials in children and adults aged between six years plus with no comorbidities and otherwise well. That's a broad scope of practice. What you've done here, you've included the area ENT. You've included the age range, you've included male and female, and you're also including, you can say the differentials as well. Very, very important for you to remember this, very important for you to remember. So that's important to focus on. The other thing might be that you might want to go narrow. For example, you might say, okay, let's go narrow. And that might be that you're going to focus on a particular condition on ENT. For example, you might say, okay, if I am going to be choosing ENT, what I'd like to do is I would like to focus on one condition. And that might be, let's say, bacterial pharyngitis. So I will learn or I will diagnose, manage and treat bacterial pharyngitis in children age six plus to 18 years with no comorbidities. So you're becoming very specific. Every university is different. For example, Leicester University, they require your scope of practice to be a bit more broad. Some universities require your scope of practice to be a bit more narrow, but you need to have a scope of practice that you can demonstrate that you're competent in. This is a key thing. Ask yourself, do you safely already manage, diagnose and treat those conditions? If you're not doing that, then that's not your scope of practice. And it's not good enough to just know a bit about the disease state. You've got to know it properly, what we discussed here.
So to recap, what is your scope of practice? What have you learned today? What you've learned is number one, my scope of practice is a condition that I can safely manage, diagnose and treat easy and I have experience in it I'm seeing patients I'm doing it then how do you choose your scope of practice if you know what your scope of practice is you can easily choose your scope of practice then you're focusing on example areas am I good at ENT respiratory musculoskeletal which areas am I good in and then how to write your scope of practice simply choose the disease state so diagnosis and management off insert blank the disease or the overall body system like ENT. So diagnosis, management, treatment off ENT or let's say otitis media. In age range, which age range? Adults, children, age range. So let's say six years to 18 years. So diagnosis, management and treatment of ENT related conditions in children age and we can see someone's knocking on the door and we told them many times do not knock on this door because we're so busy but as you can see sometimes it happens so we got to tell them to not disturb us because we're having so much fun here let's bring it right back like I said to you when we're writing that scope of practice what I need you to focus on is diagnosis and management of ENT related conditions in adults and children age range and then you can finish off by saying with no comorbidities and that finishes your scope of practice. I hope you've liked the video, I'd like to share the video, thank you for watching and together let's make a difference. Have a great day, thank you. Hey everybody, it's Fahim, pharmacy prescriber, contractor, founder of MedLearn. It's amazing for you to be here today and I hope you are all in good health because we have an absolutely special video today. We are going to be focusing on making sure that you thoroughly understand everything you need to know about your scope of practice. So before we go any further, as you know, subscribe, like, share, and click on the bell icon because we need you to be part of the family so together we can A, build a better world, make a difference, and let's make sure we are absolutely enjoying our lives. 